Okay, so let's start today. So welcome everyone. Today we have with us Gaetana Anemiati, also known as Tania. <laughs> and she's going to tell us about uh, quasi direct neutrinos at the LHC. So, thank you, Tania. Go ahead. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I start with an introduction in which I explain what is the goal of this work and then uh, why and how to deal with massive neutrinos. I present you the left right symmetric model, that is the scenario in which uh, I worked, and finally the results and the conclusions. Okay, the electron number violation is searching for at LHC using the uh, same sign in plus two jets, in same sign lepton production plus two jets, and opposite sign uh, lepton production plus two jets um, from the production and some a subsequent decay of heavy neutrinos. In particular, the expected value for the ratio between these two kinds of events is 1 for Majorana neutrinos and 0 for the neutrinos. Uh, we point out that values that vary continuously in this range are also a possibility, in particular if we, in, we focus on the case of an inverse of mechanism in the electroisymmetric model and also discuss how a measurement of this ratio can be correlated with other observables such as the branching ratio of mu to gamma. Uh, let me start from an overview about the neutrino's properties in the standard model. We know that a neutrino is a particle with spin of half and uh, it has no electric charge. In the standard model, neutrinos are massless. Um, it is because um, only one elicit state per generation is present for a neutrino, so no direct mass term. Um, there will be another, um, another possibility that is a Majorana mass step, only that this possibility uh, violates the lepton number that is a quantity conserved in the standard model. So, what are the motivations for considering massive neutrinos? Well, from a, from a theoretical point of view, I can say only that there are no um, fundamental reasons why one does not introduce uh, a right handed neutrino field in the fermion content content of the standard model such that it can fail with the left and the one in order to, to produce a um, direct mass term. Moreover, if we compare neutrinos with the other massless particles in the standard model, gluon and photon, there is a difference between them because gluon and photon are massless due to a symmetry that one impose, imposes in the theory, that is the local gauge invariance. But the symmetry that protects neutrinos from acquiring mass is the lepton number that is, I can say, an accidental symmetry. I mean, it can be broken without uh, physical consequences. However, the most exhaustive explanation comes from an experimental point of view. If one thinks to the interaction um, of the cosmic ray proton with the nuclei in the upper atmosphere, this interaction produces um, electron neutrino type and muon neutrino type. However, um, experimental measurements uh, um, demonstrate that um, there is a, a muon type neutrino deficit. In the same way, if we uh, think about uh, solar neutrinos, uh, um, in the central core of the Sun, electron type neutrinos are produced, but um, uh, from experiments, one can see that not uh, um, all the neutrinos that arrive in the Earth are electron-type neutrinos. Uh, it is because of the neutrino oscillations, I mean that a neutrino can oscillate uh, can oscillates into uh, another neutrino with different flavor, and it is possible only if, only if neutrinos have its ma mass. Here you can see uh, why? And there is no reason why a massive neutrino is a particle with a specified mass eigenvalue. I mean that a flavor eigenstate is a superposition of mass eigenstates. Here the flavor is sorry. Here the flavor eigenstates are called the new L and the mass eigenstates new alpha. U is the matrix that um, relate the two eigenstates called mixing matrix. The second equation is just equal to the first one with evolution in time. The most important is the last one, that is the probability that a neutrino with flavor L oscillates into another neutrino with flavor L prime. You can see that this probability is proportional to the cosine of the mass difference squared, minus one. So if this mass difference is zero, all the probability is zero. 
these are relations cannot happen. Of course, if you know, doing as a massless, the probability is, is zero, but we know. <laughs> but we have experimental discovery of neutrino oscillation. This is the form of the U matrix, um, a unitary matrix. Um, you can be parameterized in this way. You can see three angles uh, C and S are uh, respectively cosine and sine. Here you see only three phases because, thanks to a redefinition of the fields, you can remove three of the six phases. Only three phases are physical. Another problem about the neutrino physics is uh, it's called the DRQ problem. Uh, it is because from atmospheric experiments we know uh, what is the mass difference squared between um, M3 and M2, and from solar experiments the mass difference between M2 and M1, but we don't know we, um, the, um, the absolute value of M1, M2, M3. So we don't know, for example, if M1, M2 is lighter or bigger than M3. In the first case, uh, we, can, we call the hierarchy uh, inverted, in the second case, normal hierarchy. <coughs> Another problem is now, uh, now that neutrinos are massive, but um, another problem is about the nature of the neutrinos. They are Dirac or Majorana particles. Okay, let's imagine to have a neutrino that go in a direction uh, opposite to the direction of its spin, it is a left-handed neutrino. Uh, in the standard model, neutrinos are massless, so it can go to, with the speed of light. So an observer that go in the same direction of its momentum only will see a left-handed object. But if we suppose that neutrinos are massive, um, uh, they, uh, this neutrino cannot um, run uh, with a speed of light, so uh, there will be a frame in which an observer will see a neutrino going in the other direction, that means in the same direction of its spin, that means a right-handed object. Now the question is, who is this right-handed right object? Uh, we have experimental evidence only um, of left-handed neutrinos and right-handed antineutrinos. So if we postulate the existence of other two objects, a right-handed neutrino and a left-handed antineutrino, we can say that the observer sees a right-handed neutrino and the neutrino is Dirac neutrino. But if we don't want to postulate the existence of these two other objects, we have another possibility that is that neutrino is a Majorana neutrino. Here I used this notation okay, and I can explain the, the next slide. The important property of the Majorana neutrino is that it's, it is, uh, it's our antineutrino. From here you can understand a little bit why the lepton number is violated, because if we, if we assign lepton number is equal to 1 for particles and lepton number equal to minus 1 for antiparticle, if neutrino is it's our antineutrino, you have problem, the lepton number is, viola is violated. Here there is the Dirac mass term. You can see that we make the two elliptic states. Here, from the Madovirana condition, you can see that what I wrote here is exactly a right handed object. C stays for um, charge conjugation. This C is a matrix that its form um, depends from the representation that you are using. This is a, mass, a Majorana mass term. The last question about neutrino physics is, is how to explain the smallness of neutrino masses. The most elegant way is the CISO mechanism. In order to implement this, this mechanism, uh, we add a um, right-handed neutrino in the fermion content of the standard model, that is a singlet. It means that it cannot uh, interact. Mm, it, uh, Yes, doesn't have good age interactions. Mm, this is the mass, the full mass, mm, where MD is the, um, the Dirac mass term and MR is the Majorana mass term that violates the lepton number. After the diagonalization of the mass matrix, you find two alien values, and with the assumption that MR is much larger than MD, you find M1 proportional to MD squared over MR and M2 
almost equal uh, to MR. This explain, um, explains the smallness of neutrino masses because if an MR is very larger than MD, M1 is very smaller than MD and MD has the same scale, the same mass scale of the other fermions. There is a problem related to the mass scale. It is too large in the sense that, for example, if we fit about a tau particle, it has a mass of the order of GV. We know from experiment that the, the mass of, of the neutrino is to the order of uh, EV. So MR has to be to the order of 10 to 9 GV. That means that um, it cannot be measured. Now the scale arrived is to the order of TV. Okay, now we arrive to the left-right symmetric model. Oh, I don't want to give you many details about this model, just uh, uh, we have to know that the motivation to construct this model is the um, quality conservation, because in the standard model um, the fermions are organized in doublets, the left-handed fermions are in doublets, and the right and fermions are in singlets, so the parity is not conserved. But if, uh, if we introduce a new symmetry, uh, we have a new symmetry. This symmetry um, transforms the right-handed fermions in, do in doublets, and the left-handed fermions in singlet. <laughs> so, uh, um, here the variety is conserved because the variety must interchange the left and the right part. Uh, by introducing this new symmetry, you have new, three uh, new gauge weak bosons, uh, WR and Zeta prime. We um, know only experimental constraints about their masses, and they are very much larger than the ordinary weak bosons. Okay, let's go uh, to the goal of the work. We are interested in to analyze this kind of process, processes. Um, let's imagine that um, a WR plus is, produ is produced, it is on shell, and it decay into L plus and a neutrino. Now there are two possibilities. If this neutrino is a direct neutrino, it can decay only into a L minus because a direct neutrino conserves the lepton number. Here you have the initial state, the lepton number is zero, and here the lepton number is zero with direct neutrinos. But if the neutrino is a majorana neutrino, we know that a neutrino and an antineutrino are the same particle, so the antineutrino can decay into an antilepton, L plus, and the lepton number is violated from two units. Okay, um, we worked in the inverse SOAP mechanism. Um, in, our, in order to implement this um, inverse SOAP, we add in the content of the left right symmetric model a new singlet that I called S. This is the Lagrangian. Uh, MD here is a Dirac master. Here MR is two a Dirac master. The mass term that violates the lepton number is mu s, that is the Majorana mass term. In this basis, this is the full mass matrix. Mm, I want to underline that now um, I will show you the result in one generation, so they have number mr, mu s, and t. And after the diagonalization, this is the mm, AM value for the lightest, lightest neutrino. You can see that with the assumption of mu s much smaller than MD, that is much smaller than, M than MR, the, smallest of, the smallness of this neutrino mm, is guaranteed by mu s, by the smallness of, of mu s. So if we, mm, with the choice of MR um, to the order of TB that now can be measured, MD to the order of GB, mu s is more or less to the order of MEV. Okay, after the, dot, the diagonalization of the matrix, they are the eigen values. Let's um, concentrate on the Eri sector. You can see that uh, these two guys have almost the same mass, just there is the correction of the small 
must turn, that is at the Majorana must turn, the mass difference is very small, it's proportional to mu s. We can say that they are almost degenerate. This is the vector matrix, I, the adjoint of I is just a mathematical trick in order to get positive masses. Okay, by defining the mass eigenstates, uh, by defining the mass eigenstates basis, uh, I can uh, write the um, gauge eigenstates, the gauge states in terms of the mass eigenstates, um, and I can calculate the probability that a neutrino oscillates into itself. That is the Dirac case. So we have op opposite sign production and the probability that the neutrino oscillates into an antineutrino that is the Majorana case in which we have the electron number violation same sign production, electron production. After the calculation, the reaction takes this form. You can see that if mu is zero, you are in this extreme. The ratio is zero, my uh, extreme. If mu is much larger than the decay, you are in the Majorana extreme. But if mu is different from zero but small, you are in this range. Uh, it is a result different from what you can find if you do the same thing for the CISO mechanism, for example, because for the CISO me mechanism, this ratio is uh, only one because in the CISO mechanism you have only a heavy neutrino that, uh, that has, a, um, that has a, la a big mass that is an R, so you can imagine it by forgetting the second state and the mu s. When you um, calculate this probability, when you square, you get all the MR squared and the same here. So the ratio becomes 1. Here I can give you some predictions about uh, the second run of the LHC. We know that the number of events is calculated from the luminosity and the cross-section that can be parameterized uh, in this way. The luminosity is just a characteristic, uh, the, uh, characteristic of the accelerators. I mean, uh, the higher is the luminosity, more data are available to be analyzed. In the first run of the LHC, the luminosity was um, around 20 femtoparn and the center of mass energy equal to 8 TV. It means that with these elements um, they saw only 14 events. In the second round we know that the luminosity will be around 13, uh, 300 femtoparn and the, the center of mass energy 15 TV. So we can see 500 events. It means that the maximum value that R can um, can take is one, the minimum value is if we, if they, we just see only two uh, same sign events is around 10 to minus 3. It means, for example, that we see only this part. But I have to underline that I cannot um, give you prediction because this is um, well, this is written in the one generation, I have to calculate it for three generations, that means that I have to insert the mixing matrix. Here um, I show you the formula for, to, um, for calculating the branch equation of mu to e gamma. It is taken from the literature, Lim and Dinami, left to right defy the ordinary formula. Here you have to imagine um, two Feynman diagrams, one for the left part and one for the right part. Um, these decays are the decay of the heavy neutrino in the left part and the, in the right part. In particular, oh, let me call the left and the, the, the decay, is proportional to MD to the 4 over M um, R squared because um, the heavy neutrino um, cannot interact directly with the WL to pay the insertion of 2 x here that produces this MT. In the right uh, um, diagram, um, this decay is proportional to the mass we, we are uh, 
neglecting the muter. Now, by remembering the AM value of the lightest neutrino of the inverse CSO, you can note that the correlation with the ratio is possible only if this part dominates. Here is show. I show you how it can it's possible. In particular, here we are um, working in three generations. It means that we have to deal these uh, guys are matrices, we have to analyze it them. And uh, in the left right symmetric model, the matrix MR is not symmetric, so you need uh, two matrices to analyze the matrix. You can take uh, mu S mm, diagonal, and this mu L is the matrix that the diagonalize and mu. This R mm, is an, another matrix that we come from the Casas Ibarra parametrization. We have only the constraint that it is a um, orthogonal matrix. Uh, this is the plot. You and I cannot give you prediction because um, this plot was made by um, put uh, um, specific of value values of all these elements. But the better thing would be um, um, a scan over all the possible values. Uh, here there are another correlation with other two observable, the decay of the mass more than a dedicated branching ratio of the heavy neutrino into lepton and two jet into jets and uh, the branching ratio of the heavy neutrino into an imps and a lighter neutrino. The, the red line is for the first one, the blue line is this. Okay, we have seen that these processes are good tests for studying neutrino mass nature, in particular in the left right symmetric model that predicts the existence of right-handed neutrinos. Thank you, Tania. So, questions, comments? Anyone? I have to try to look at the instead of two jets, uh, four leptons? No. No. But however, the mm, the important, uh, the, mm, how to say, the goal of, of the work is here, is just the propagator, the neutrino, because here you understand if there is lepton number conservation violation. Yes, but the, for the Just for curiosity, you no. Know, it's very low for the um, so Maybe you, the signal versus background is Oh, that's good. It's just a detail, but you show there the rotation matrix for inverse seesaw, right? It's this W matrix. This one? This one? That one, yes. So actually these are these are para Entries of the matrix have dimension of mass, right? And the one is dimensionless. Ah, um, yes, there is a. So maybe there is some uh, ratio it there, no? Should be ratios yes, of masses. See. Also in the next slide, right? When you relate the the, the states. Yeah, there, right? That probably it's a ratio of masses, right? Uh, there is the ratio of, um, over MR. Over a month, oh, yeah. So in that case, it's less than an approximation. See. Yes, that's the same. Uh, I also wanted to ask about the process of organization. Could you explain it a little bit more? Mm. How, how did you implement that? Uh, it's very complicated to speak about the Gazi Barra Barra meditation. One minute. I should um, do all the calculation in order to um, tell you, for example, where who is this matrix. Well, you start from the you start from the inverse so You have to imagine that they are matrix three by three matrixes, uh, and by putting uh, the mixes matrix in order to 
diagonalize this one, you get this formula, but it's very complicated. If you want to, then <laughs> after we can um, observe my notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, no worries. But my question was more or less pointing at the, uh, some typical values for the. Uh, the parameter point for the extra parameters that you the have point is that you have mm, you have uh, to how to say to choose random choice for this value and uh, scan over all the parameters that are possible. In this these plots will be with uh, some points shift with a shift, for example. It, it depends from the parameters that you are considering. But just here you can see only the behavior. Mm. Can, can just you, a line. <laughs> can't you just assume that the matrix are diagonal with one parameter just to make it simple, simpler to mm. make this analysis? All the matrix is diagonal? Yes, mm. uh, no. the, the major. You can't. No? No, you can because of the model. Because you want to take the... Um, the interaction diagonal, so you have to diagonalize the mass. I also have a question. So it's about uh, can you go back to slide 19? Two more. And one more. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, this one. I, I didn't get the message in this in this slide. So these 14 events have been observed already. See. And then you use them to extrapolate to predict what you will observe. Exactly. Okay. And then you know the background for these 14 events because otherwise, we, if there is no background, we could already say that lepton number is violated. No, because no. in the standard model you expect zero. No? Sí. Okay. This would be uh, important no? to, to understand what is the, the relevance of this number. Exactly. The point is that it, it is the, um, for example, if, if the ratio is around um, 10 to minus 3, the, with this choice of parameters that is not totally correct, uh, the branching ratio is here, that means to the order of 10 to minus 16, but we know that from meta experiments that um, the upper limit is 10 to minus 13. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a possibility is that uh, the correlation exists, but the experimenters cannot see it. Yeah, of course. <coughs> now, actually, you? R could be zero. No? If, this, if the background is at the level of yes. 14, R could be zero, exactly. and then exactly. you observe nothing. Would you believe in a statement that says that the, the lepton number is violated with 14 events? If you expect zero? <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, 14 events. <laughs> It's a lot, it just takes zero. Mm -hmm. Zero plus minus one, 14 is <laughs> Zero plus minus 14, no. <laughs> plus minus one, yes. Other comments or questions? I don't see any comments, no questions, so we thank Tanya again. Thank you, Tanya.